Hello folks, welcome back, Samuel Golden again. In this week's episode of How to Become a Pilot, let's talk gear. For those of you who like to buy cool stuff, like me, you're gonna have some fun with this one. Let's start with the most important, your headset. Airplanes are noisy machines, so you'll need something that does a good job of protecting your hearing and making communications easy. You have two types of headsets to choose from, passive noise reduction and active noise reduction. Passive noise reduction, something like this, uses foam and sound deadening to block out the noise, whereas active noise reduction goes a step further and uses anti-noise to cancel out loud, constant noise. Keep in mind that active noise canceling headsets like this one use batteries, so you'll wanna keep a few extras on hand. Starting with a basic or more sophisticated headset is up to you and your future flying goals, but speaking from personal experience here, my confidence as a pilot went up significantly when I purchased a headset with active noise canceling. I felt a lot more confident and comfortable being certain of what air traffic control, my flight instructor, and other pilots were saying to me. After some research, if you're still having a hard time deciding, you may want to consider renting or borrowing a few headsets to experience them for yourself, and then it'll be obvious. Next up is the E6B flight computer. The name refers to a part number for it used by the Army Air Corps in the 1940s. It's basically a fancy circular slide rule, which you can use on one hand to calculate ground speed, time and route, and fuel burn. You can then flip it over and visually show the wind and required heading to correct for the wind. However, like many things that are so useful, it requires some learning to be able to use it. Lucky for you, King Schools has a free YouTube series to teach you how to use the E6B. It's a great series. I'll link it on the screen and in the description for you to check out. There are also electronic E6Bs, and they are much easier to use, but they rely on batteries. And be aware that during critical times, like a check ride, you might experience an untimely battery failure. Additionally, some flight examiners believe pilots should not be dependent on an electronic E6B, and you may be required to demonstrate prof proficiency with a manual E6B, so it's wise to start with a manual one. For a nice but inexpensive manual E6B, like this one, check out the link on the screen or in the description. Next up is charts. The two you will deal with mostly at the beginning are sectional charts, which cover a bigger area and an RD ideal for cross-country flying, and terminal area charts or tacks that show detailed or zoomed in sections of major metropolitan areas. Keep in mind that terminal and sectional charts are updated every six months, so be sure to replace expired charts before you fly. That way you'll never miss an important update like a frequency change or a new obstacle. The last de device to consider today is an electronic flight bag or EFB. Commonly used on an iPad or tablet, EFBs are super powerful tools for all phases of flight. There's some debate about this, but an EFB can heavily supplement or even replace some of the tools I just mentioned, such as the E6B, the chart, and a lot more. I'd recommend that you talk to your CFE, CFI about whether an EFB is right for you then you can decide on what kind of hardware and software you want to use. For reference, this is a 9.7 inch iPad running for flight software. I use it all the time, I love it. But whatever you use, be sure to get instruction so you're getting the most out of them in the air. Okay, that's it for today, folks. In next week's episode, we will discuss your first solo flight. This flight is a wonderful day that you'll remember forever, so I can't wait to talk about it with you. Stay tuned.